exactly. So as far as the training tip of the week, what we want to go over this week is the three county record types. Uh, we want to talk about how as us as tax sale investors uh, really research these tax sale properties. And 80, 90 percent of the research that we do is going to be held on the county websites. Yeah, that's always going to be where we get the most accurate information. It's the, the the primary source of all of our information, you know, what we're what we're gathering about the property. Um, and so, yeah, there are a couple of different types of records that we generally access, and uh, those records are usually either the treasurer or the tax collector. Um, and usually, those records are related to things like the, the payment of taxes. Um, assessor records, which are all related to the, the property assessment and how it's valued. And so the assessment records are incredibly uh, relevant and valuable to us. Uh, then we also access um, the recorders or the clerk's records. Um, sometimes, you know, these are called official records or uh, uh, legal records. You know, you can refer to them to uh, basically the same office that records deeds is the same office we're going to be looking at. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to break down each one of these offices and talk a little bit about them tonight, starting with the treasurer. It could be called the treasurer. It could be called the tax collector. In some states, it could be called the tax claim office. Um, but whoever's in charge of collecting the property taxes is usually going to be the treasurer tax collector. The, that same office not always is the case, but that same office many times is go, also going to be in charge of the tax sale. So even in some states that are tax lien states, obviously the tax collector, but even in tax deed states, it could still be the the treasurer, the tax, uh, the treasurer or tax collector that's actually holding the tax deed auctions. Yeah, in fact, it's almost always going to be a good idea to go into the tax history of the property because that is going to show you essentially, you know, what has what's been paid and what hasn't been paid. That's really where we can determine what the what the true roll up of the property is. So what the two, you know, I mean, how much has not been paid here in delinquent taxes that the county's trying to get. Uh, and and so yeah, it's very important there when we're looking at the tax records so that we can see which years were actually paid and which years weren't paid. You know, that's ultimately what's going to uh, cost with the property is is a lot of you know past due taxes that are owed. You know, which with tax liens we call roll up. You know, with deeds we just see a deed that has a crazy high opening bid compared to its value. You know, to the point where some can be upside down. They're not worth bidding on. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and so when we're talking about tax lien investing in particular, the tax collector records are going to be real important because with the tax deed, just like Shade mentioned, that that opening bid amount is going to be all the delinquent taxes. So except for maybe going to the treasurer's office. Uh, to get the tax sale list and the tax sale information, uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, using the tax collector to find out things about the property. In fact, on that slide that we were just looking at, it had information there about different liens. And so you can see some of the history of the certificates from different years past and how much we're gaining interest. And so when Shade was talking about the roll up really that's where we can find out if there is any additional back taxes because if we do the foreclosure if we end up going through the foreclosure process we, we're going to be in charge of paying all of those delinquent taxes off yeah really whether we're looking at liens or deeds it's important for us to know you know what has happened with the, you know historically with the taxes on the property because you know there, there's there's generally going to be money that's outstanding or that's owed on it and so, uh, yeah, the, the tax payment history is really important. Um, the assessment records uh, are, 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 you know, in most cases now are linked directly to the online auctions or, you know, to the lists. And so it makes it relatively easy. You can just click on a link to, you know, pull up all the information about the property. And you don't really have to go in and, and use parcel search tools um, so much. But we still do that all the time. Um, you know, we use parcel search tools. Uh, to plug in the information, um, and generally the fastest way to you know to find things like the uh, the assessor's uh, uh, the parcel search tool in the assessor's website is usually with just a basic in, uh, you know, a basic search engine. You know, if you type in the county name and the assessor, we can usually pull it right up, and from there uh, we can usually pull up not only the the information related to how the property is valued, but also the mapping. That's where all the mapping is attached. Um, and so, and the sales history of the property you know, is attached to it. Usually, you know, there's a lot of really valuable information here. 
Yeah, yeah, like Shay talked about with the parcel search tool, many times it could be connected to the to the record. If not, then we'll find that tool and look up it using the parcel number. But really, the assessor records is where we're going to make a determination if we're going to move on to this to the in our research or not. In fact, in our stages of due diligence, we teach our members three stages of due diligence. And in stage one, one of the first steps is going to the assessor record because as we review that, Shade already talked about how we're going to see stuff like the sales information. We're also going to have an idea of the assessed value, the location, uh, you know, the 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 breakup of the value, if it's land value or improvement value, how many bedrooms, how many baths, if it's a structure, when it was built, how many square feet and the size of the lot all of that information including links to many times the the gis maps are going to be connected to the county assessor's records yeah in fact you know we we kind of treat uh, due diligence you know we do it in in kind of waves or in cycles because the whole idea here is not to waste a lot of time it's to try to save yourself time and so uh, you know you try to weed out properties where you can and and not invest a lot of time into them until you're sure that they're going to work um, and so it's one of the reasons why pulling up, you know, property records and and the actual uh, property assessment is so valuable. It's because the information alone from the property assessment is usually enough to tell us whether, you know, we have the potential for a deal or not. Um, you know, now information like, for instance, if we could pull up the tax, right, you know, the, the, uh, the, the tax collector information and it could, you know, it could basically put a damper on all of this information that we see here. But, you know, if we can determine you know the information here about the property we can you know we can figure out if there's a deal possible yeah as you guys can see we're going to have a ton of information here you know the address listed there the book and page number the last time it was sold uh, then we'll get into the ownership information and the sales information in fact when we go do our recorder search uh, and search the the legal records. That's really where we're going to be taking the names and information. So if we were to decide that we were interested in this property, we would have to research that owner's name. Uh, we can see that this particular property is a condominium, about a thousand square feet. Uh, you know, had a value of around sixty-seven thousand. So it's a small condo. Uh, we've got an idea of when it was built in nineteen seventy-two, and two bedroom, two bath. Yeah, yeah, and essentially, uh, and you know, we can also learn more information about it as we want. Like we can click on links to get maps, uh, you know, and the maps, the GIS maps alone are are, are a kind of a, a whole area of, that we use for uh, for uh, is to gain information about the property. You know, the GIS mapping is going to tell us where it's physically located at, make sure it's accessible by public streets, let us know what the boundaries are for the property, and in a lot of cases, we can. There are tools that are built into a lot of the GIS systems now, like sales, uh, like like sales tools, you know, are built into these now, so that you can look look through a GIS county map and you can click on on one of the uh, the, the layers in it, and you can pull up all of the sales for 2023 and all the sales from 2022 and 2021, and you know, it, so that it makes it a lot easier, especially if you're doing something like uh, like like let's say you're trying to find comps for land. Uh, that can be very helpful, you know, when you're looking for something like that. Or, uh, 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 you know, in fact, the GIS records have really something that's probably changed the most over the last, you know, 10 or 20 years. Before GIS maps with plat maps, it was a nightmare because you had to try to figure it out, and 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 you were, you know, you couldn't always be sure. With the GIS mapping, we can learn quite a bit more about the property, and they usually attach everything else to it as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, Shade talked about how we can use them to figure out price values, but we can also use them because they may have floodplains uh, overlays and and topographical maps. In fact, we've saved ourselves uh, from doing bad deals because a lot of times we're not going to send somebody out to take a photo of a piece of land that we're going to be buying by using the topographical map where looking at the overhead, it may look like there's not that much of a you know of an incline but as we look at the topographical map we can see no actually it's it's it, you know it's rising in elevation by quite a bit which really is going to make it maybe unbuildable and so just by using the topographical map has saved us from doing bad deals versus a good deal yeah oh, oh, absolutely it has in fact uh, it's it's a good idea to look at especially if you're in an area that that you know has some terrain to it you know, if it's not very flat, if it's got hills to it, it's a really good idea to uh, to pull up the topographical maps so you can figure out what kind of elevation change you're looking at. But 
Um, the third kind of record here, you know, the recorder or the clerk's records, I said that they could be referred to maybe as official records or legal records. Um, you know, this tends to be the last thing that we search because this is after we've already determined that the property can work uh, and the numbers are there. Um, it's when we're trying to make sure there aren't any additional risks that are there with the property, liens that might be attached to it or, uh, you know, other things, uh, you know, mortgage or judgment or, if, you know, it can also tell us quite a bit about the history of the property as we're going through this process as well. Um, but the way we do that is by digging into the deeds um, a little bit and the uh, and the ownership history of, of the property itself. And so uh, when we go into the, the, the recorder's uh, records or, or the, uh, the clerk's records, um, we can generally see uh, everything related to the property and what's happened to it so we can usually see exactly how it got to where it, it, it is yeah really we're going to be using the assessor records to help us pull up the recorder clerk's records because what we're looking for is for any type of government lien that could survive the foreclosure we know the tax sale properties go through a judicial foreclosure and in that judicial foreclosure things like mortgages judgments are erased from the property uh, but what can stick are those government issued liens and so when we're talking about government issued liens there's really three major types there's some other types that in certain states could stick uh, first one being an irs lien uh, with an irs lien it's it's more of a waiting period it's not like a state or, or a city lien essentially we have to fill out a notification letting the irs know we bought the property they have 120 days to either redeem it meaning pay us off what we uh, pay us off what we paid and take ownership or release the lien in most cases we found that they'll go ahead and release the lien the second type is state liens uh, they can um stick to the property as well but the most common type and shade will get into them a little bit is going to be some type of local municipality whether that be city or county yeah and also one thing that's kind of nice is that there are some counties that will actually send out the irs notices um, before they do the auctions and and so you know by the time the auctions happen you know it's already been you know a, a set time period there and in fact in some cases that they can get them cleared that's one nice thing is is with IRS liens we don't have to pay it you know that's one good thing is when we see that it's not an amount we're ever going to have to pay it's just an, a, it's just a matter of whether or not they're going to take the property um, state liens though we do see in some cases it kind of depends on on the state you know some states have things like income tax you know that they could issue liens for. We've seen that, um, you know, um, but again, not always necessarily against properties. Um, you know, we can find those types of liens, though. But by far, the most common thing that we come across, though, are liens that are, that are uh, issued against the property because it's a mess, you know, or because, um, you know, uh, because they have to you know, cut the grass or because there's junk or, you know, stuff laying there or because the building or the structures no longer uh, uh, meets code. You know, if it no longer meets code, like for instance, if if uh, if if a property is deemed unsafe uh, and is condemned, well, that's a whole legal is a legal process that it goes through to you know to deem the property is an unsafe structure and that they need to uh, to make sure nobody goes into it and you know which is a step before they go through the process to tear it down, um, which is uh, another one of the liens we have listed here, demolition lien. Um, a demo lien. Uh, if you see liens that are uh, for large amounts, twelve, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars, a lot of times what we're looking at are uh, the buildup of multiple years of taxes and something like a demolition lien against a property. Um, you know, and and best way to to prove that out is is when you go there and you look and see that you know they have improvement value there, but the home is no longer there. You know, or you can see that you know the, the remnants of what used to be a lot. And sometimes we can even see exactly when they took it down. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I mean, with with the county or a city or a nuisance type lien, that's going to always be connected to the property. They're going to be using the property as collateral. With something like a state lien, depending on the state, they may or may not attach the property to the lien. Uh, you know, and but with a county or a city type lien, those are always going to be using the property as collateral for that lien and attaching that property using the legal description. Uh, you know, uh, to that uh, to that specific lien. So how do we find these search tools? Well, we already talked about the person that's recording the deeds, the mortgages, the judgments uh, is usually going to be the office that keeps the records. In most states, it'll be connected to the clerk, to the recorder's office. 
Um, and we, we talked a little bit about before using the same type of tools to find the legal records that we use in finding the assessor records. We can go to the county website and look for the recorder's office or the clerk's office, or we can do a quick Google search using keywords like legal records, uh, you know, court records, um, liens, deeds, mortgages, uh, and pull up the specific county that way. Yeah, which um, also there are uh, sometimes a couple of different types of searches you can do. So, um, you know, I used to, you know, just think of them all as legal records, but you've got a couple of different kinds of legal records that you have here. Um, you know, you have, uh, you know, and, and and I guess so it depends. Sometimes when we're looking through, we'll look, we'll be looking through all the different types of records, including, uh, you know, civil, criminal um, you know, traffic tickets and everything. Sometimes it's all included in one, um, and sometimes they have them separated, like in this case where we have, uh, you know, the county here has separated them into what they have, you know, court record searches and official record searches. So they kind of have their deeds and and mortgages and and everything you know, separated from, you know, the, their 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 criminal and civil cases. Um, and so in this case, we would do search the official record there, and um, and that's where we would be able to find liens against property. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Shade said, sometimes they'll combine them, sometimes they'll separate them. You know, in this case, we we have a couple of different ways that we're going to search it. First of all, we're going to search it from the owner's information, from the using the owner's name. Uh, we talked about that with the assessor records, and that's the reason we're going to use the assessor records to research this property. Uh, you know, once we search the owner's name, we'll usually just go ahead and search the, the owner's name by itself and, and try to pull up everything we can against the owner. But let's say that we had an owner that owned a lot of real estate and had a lot of records. Uh, maybe they had a thousand records and we've seen this, you know, in fact, we just had this happen this week, uh, you know, in doing research for one of our buying tours where we take students to an auction where uh, there was, you know, literally 1500, 1800 records on it. Well, in that case, then we can narrow down that search by searching by the document type. So I was able to search by lien and state lien and federal lien and different categories and then also search for any releases of those liens. That way, instead of trying to go through 1800 records which would be you know nearly impossible or take a lot of time to do i was able to narrow that down and then look for liens that were issued against that particular property yeah really um it, it what we're trying to do when we're searching through these records is save ourselves time and so a lot of what we do kind of depends on how much you know how many records pull up you know if we go and plug the name in there um, and and we only get back five records, you know, then it, it makes it very easy for us to go through those and and uh, and to quickly see whether or not there are liens against the property, at least, or if there were any liens that were placed against the property during the time that they owned it. Um, you know, that's that's one important part about when we're doing those record searches is that, um, you know, it's one of the reasons why when we're looking at properties, you know, uh, uh, we might need to research and go back multiple owners depending on how they bought it. You know, if they bought it with a, like a quick claim deed, they could have bought it and it could have liens against it when they bought it. And you wouldn't know because that's the nature of quick claim deeds. Um, you know, but if it's something like a warranty deed that we come up against, then we know that it was free and clear at the time that it was purchased. And so, uh, it, you know, at that point, we know that, that we have one owner that, you know, and that's the only name that we're going to need to search because, you know, they when they bought it, it was free and clear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In fact, that's something that we teach our students how to be able to do is to go through that process and, and do what we call researching the chain of title. In some circumstances, if it was issued with a warranty deed last, it's going to be a lot more simple than if it's been sold multiple times over the last few years using a quick claim deed. But we're all going to do all of that searching from this record search tool, which will pull up all of the records that are attached to that individual name. Sometimes I'll even use the book and page number to pull up deeds or information or see if anything's connected to that specific book and page number. And what the book and page number is kind of the number that's used for the deed. It's like the parcel number for the deed itself. So in the past, they actually used to have books and they would open up book 76 and page 65, and that would be where your deed would be located. They still use that same system, but now in the, instead of having just physical records that you had to go to the county courthouse most of this stuff's online and available for us to research mm -hmm.